Okay. Um, hello. And I already started out with a little bit of a drum beat a little while ago. So let's just start with that drum beat, basic techno drum beat, really simple. And most of this is happening on the Syntact. This is the stock bass drums. There's the FM synth bass drum, and then there's also the analog kick. And I basically, I think I tuned the analog kick down to meet the same as the bass drum. So they're pretty much talking to each other. And then I added a little bit of echo, a little bit of effect. And then I got a little excited and I started um, adding a couple of kicks here on the Diggy Tack, just a couple of sampled items. I did for fun start with a um, a little bit of a, just a like a synth sound from the Juno, but let's see what it sounds like on unmuted. Not my favorite. One other thing that I did is I routed all of my effect sins into the Syntact because one cool thing about the Syntact is you not only get access to extra reverb and delay like you would if you were talking to the, um, if you're routing those effects through the DigiTact or the DigiTone. But the Syntact, you also get filters and some envelope access, and you can also add LFOs um, to the inputs. So I'm going to experiment a little bit with that. So I've got all of my effect sins going into the Syntact as well, which is pretty cool. So let's go back to the little Juno line. I just want to bring that up. Kind of like that. Let's um, kill the... Sustain. I actually kind of like the sustain where it's at. Huh. Take a little bit of the attack off. Alright. My VCF. I'm going to raise that a little bit. bit of that resonance. Otherwise I'm gonna start something kinda goofy. We don't want that. I don't want that yet. Nothing too exciting. That's the VCF I'm gonna Okay. I don't hate it. So I'm gonna turn down the effect sins, you can hear that little bit of echo that I've got, or the delay that I've got. Okay, there you go. Kind of sitting a little more comfortably in the mix. Sure, why not? Good old, good old techno jam. So from there we've got got the chord machine. Okay, so I'm gonna pick a, so you press and hold, funk and track, and that will bring up not only the piano roll, but what kind of scale you want to play in. We'll do Ionian. I want to do at least a minor. Turn it down an octave. Oh, 
no, I think I just created every dance song created in that we'll do a major just tinker with that instrument I don't know kind of flubbed it we'll leave it let's filter out that um Here's we're going to try and do something a little spicy. I am going to look at that. Um, I'll give it a quick save. That's fine. We're going to kick open the effects. We're going to add the input. So if I turn down the Juno, kick up send. Let me make sure in this pattern I've already set. I think I'm also sending no, no sends there. I got the DigiTac sending. Turn that down. We'll adjust the input. There you go. Master, I think. Oh, yeah. There we go. I just hadn't turned it on. Okay. We got a little extra drive. This is our global uh, filter. So anything coming in through the effects ends or going through, I can also tell it to work with any of the instruments on the syntax and that will work with their own internal effects and filters, but it will also add it to the global, which is kind of cool. thinking here is that I can kind of incorporate a filter suite with an LFO, just run a little automation. So let's go to our LFO for the global effects on the syntax. We'll run down to filter, I got delay, reverb, filter frequency, yeah. We're gonna slow that down. I like my automations to run real slow. And use a ramp, and just kind of a stacking mode. So that'll just give it a good chance to, yeah, perfect. And we'll leave that second LFO for whatever we wanna do later. Let's tweak this machine here. Short and decaying. There we go. 
Okay. I like that waveform. Let's add some overdrive. Okay. Buffer that. Oops. There we go. Minor. Somewhere around there. That's somewhere right around there. Okay. Let's get our drums back here. with this little uh, hi-hat that was kind of stock there we go perfect so I'm finally seeing the thing that's been staring me in the face since I got this syntax, and that is that a lot of these bass instruments, these basic instruments, if they're the analog or the digital, um, like if you're looking on the DigiTact a 16 set sequencer, one through 16, let me try to focus that. Uh, what you're gonna notice is um, steps one through eight, or yeah, and then nine through 16, and so step, one step nine or instrument one and instrument nine on both kick drums and then let me go ahead and just uh stop this so i can kind of support this theory out the box they're both kicks snares that doesn't quite sync up because that's a clap and the 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 three the dual vco synth but then you go to your cymbals even though this is more of a ride or a crash and then you have the extra machines there okay Good to know. Let's go back to the music. There you go, kind of like that. And I can bring out the decay. Sustaining decay, but right now I'm going to bring that down and just come close the envelope on that. That's trying to go from synth chord, we want minor, and then I put the LFO on synth type. No, that's worse. There we go. So that should kind of open up that chord. I'm gonna put a lot more overdrive on it.
I think I got a little sip line here, so let's uh, set some keys. somewhere with this. Okay, so it's kind of got a little...
that kind of fell together. That's nice. Always exciting when a plan just kind of falls into place. Nice. So another fun thing I learned about the diggy tone is that, um, like on the diggy tact or the syntact, if you hold the track button, the the button directly underneath the funk button, so right here, you can hold that button and you can change a parameter, and that will make it a global change. So an idea is that you can. Um, hit like funk yes to his temporary cached save hold down that track button and we'll do it here I, so I got uh, did a temporary save I'm gonna hold down track on this uh, chord machine and then I'm gonna go to the filter and I'm just going to you know sweep it down and on the syntax or the diggy tax it just puts everything on the global filter it's great what I didn't know is that the Diggy Tone had that feature. It was the same button, it's just not marked track, it's marked um it's marked MIDI. And because it didn't say track and that didn't indicate all tracks, I just in my brain went, well, I guess the Diggy Tone just doesn't have that. And the truth be told, it does have that. And I just tried it on a whim the other day and it worked. So what I've done is let me just bring this filter down a little bit more on the syntax is I've only got two synths running. They're running the same actual um, sequence. One, and they're actually running very similar synths. I just copied a synth over, made a couple of minor adjustments, and then I made one an arpeggiator. When I hold down for all, 
and start closing off that envelope, you can't hear the arpeggiated parts. You just hear a little bit of those chords. So just kind of nice and dubby. I could even go and then we'll hit um, the amp page and then we'll go over to, I don't have any effects on it, so I could add a little chorus, add for all, and add right okay and then we'll go back to that filter page and we're gonna open up the envelope and just as I start to open it up oh that's nice oh wow With that extra delay, it, man, that's 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 pretty righteous. So we'll turn down the delay for a minute. Because basically, you're just hearing it slap around in the envelope. When I turn the delay up, that's that's awesome. That's cool. All right, so we'll we'll just turn that down for a minute. Kind of keep our sanity. Turn the resonance down a little bit. That's kind of a sweet spot right there. I'm gonna turn some of that delay back up. What is the speed on that? That can't be. Oh, that's reverb. So let's turn that quarter note dotted. So it's a little less crazy. So if I go back to the filter and I start closing that off. Yeah, even with dotted eight notes, it's not too crazy. Okay. And then, yeah, we just kind of clear it out. I got kind of loud. I'm going to turn that down. Okay. All right, that's a little more reasonable. So, yeah, just with some filters, you can do a lot. That's really cool. I'm going to ignore the snares on this and just stick with the, um, the clap.
pretty fun. So let's see, we've done this for about 33 minutes. So I think I'm gonna add everything I wanna add to this. Now let's start figuring out how we can refine it, and maybe take some stuff away. automations I added a um, little extra filter to the synth lines on the digitone and automated those as well so just gentle slow automated sweeps that's what I like this things kind of breathing in and out
with that kind of like lead pad line, what I've done is I've added um, a very slow LFO to the synth harmonics. And that's just kind of like what is working against the carrier wave, if I recall correctly, on the, the, the FM side of it. And so it is like dragon. It's just slowly changing that wave shape from like sine to saw to square to saw to sine ad nauseum. It's just going to keep redoing that. So it's going to be pretty cool if that works out. fumbling around with notes again. I'm not feeling it. No more leads. It's too late in the game for that. We're going to ignore that.
Okay. The extra percussion just kind of kind of helps out. I did end up adding something after all. Okay, that's fine. My only gripe about not having the diggy tact in having all the aux sends over to the diggy tact is you lose the compressor but hey you know we're just trying stuff out and see how it works it's just a jam back our melodic elements. Okay. So I'll tell you what. Um, we got a late start. I was going to still sit with two hours, and I'm still going to do that. But I am going to start the jam a little early for this song. And then we're going to go ahead and just ride right into the ambient part. And this thing does not want to stay focused today. I'll look at that later. I'm sorry. Let's see if that's getting any better. Nope. Let's try to fix that webcam. One, I think. Properties. Control, focus, let's turn off auto, there we go, we're just going to leave that, no more auto focus, it's not doing me any good, there we go, that's way better, okay, cool. Let's just kind of start. Um, we'll just start from here. Uh, we'll give it a proper. Uh, we'll give it a proper send off. Give our ears a break for five, four, three, two, one. Start with the kicks. We'll add this other kick later. We're kind of in performance mode, and then I'll just. Um, I'll just adjust parameters as needed. Just make sure to save everything. Okay, let's go.
Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good enough. That was that was all right. I kind of flubbed in the beginning. I think with the digitone assigning volume to the wrong instrument, but not bad. Not a bad jam. All right. So let's switch gears. I'm going to do something I've done before, and I'm going to take everything over to the digitone that was on pattern the pattern we we're working on to the next one. We're going to slow it down. We're going to build around that. Um, I may also take what we were working on with Syntact and do pretty much the same thing. So let me get that set up real quick. We are on pattern uh, 11, so let's switch to 12. Before I do that on the Digitone, I need to make sure that I, I'm gonna copy the sound from two, so I'm gonna copy that pattern 12, and then we're going to Make sure that that plays. Let me do it here. Pattern 12 on the diggy tack. Stop, stop, play. Okay, clears the buffer. And then number one, we're going to paste that sound. We'll do the same for number two. We'll make something new on three and four. And then I'm gonna go and grab the triggers from track one from pattern 11. Okay, um, where are my triggers? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, we need to sequence that. Okay, and then we will, uh, we will funk, grab, copy track, and pattern 12, stop, play, stop, stop, stop. And um, then we will go back here and we will paste that. So if I go here back into the diggy tone, which is still the master clock, we were at 131, so we'll do that would be roughly 65. So let's do, yeah, around 66 for, for fun. We'll start there. So now, if I start playing. Oh yeah, that's right. That's going to be the, um, the same sequence, but I copied. The sequence from one and two were the same. And then the, um, I copied over instrument two, which had arpeggiator on it. So if I do the same thing, number one, yeah. So I can just turn arpeggiator off. Yeah, did the triggers go into track one? No, they did not. So we'll paste those in here. Yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. All right, I need to add an input.
Boom. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm actually going to go back and copy the exact instrument um, from track one on pattern 11. I don't know why, but this is being fussy. See, see how that works out. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Set that. I'm gonna get a little ticker real quick. Something to kind of hold us over.
Nice. I literally just randomly mash buttons on that. So let's play with the sound a little bit. We could also change the synth. on me that in harmonicity if that's even a word well, it's on it so we're gonna use it
I don't know what happened to all my triggers on the diggy zone. Let's figure that out. Triggers are there on the diggy tone. They're just not kicking. Let's see. I'll try it again. Okay. I guess I had a brain fart. Okay, yeah, that's nice. It's a little grander than I'm used to doing, but hey, I'm okay with it. You know, not everything has got to melt you into the couch. Okay. So I filled up the diggy tone, basically Track one and two are using the same or very similar sound. All four tracks are using the same exact um, 
They're using the same exact triggers, the same notes. Track three and four are the same, and one is just an arpeggiation of the uh, track three, so that's filled up. I can kind of automate, modulate that, and manually make some changes to that as well. Uh, the DigiTact is playing the boom, boom, boom. That's playing kind of like that 808 bass and the stick, which I accidentally left a couple of triggers in and in conjunction with that echo. I just kind of like it. I'm going to leave it. Um, on the Syntact, I only really got one percussion element. It's just kind of coming in here. And then I've got um, that dual VCO synth. I'm gonna actually copy that. Let's copy that dual VCO synth.
Yeah, I think that's something I can jam on. So we're getting close. It's been about an hour and a half. Um, we normally stop by now, but yeah, I started half an hour late tonight. So I'm going to get everything kind of set in stone a little bit. I'm going to cache everything, save it. Okay. All right. Clear out our brains for a second. Take a little breather. All right. That turned out pretty good so far. So, yeah, from here, I'm going to go ahead and just jam either until the two hour mark hits or I fall over. It's kind of late for me. So, after 10 o'clock, I turn into a little snail. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out and. We will definitely be doing the Techno Jam Friday, and um, I hope you all have a great rest of your night, and let's just go ahead and work out this little ambient jam.
Okay, cool. Ended off just right. That actually turned out to be a pretty good jam. I thought in the beginning I was going to just peter out. So that was really cool. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming. I'll put the archives up. Um, I'll do the highlights here on Twitch. I'll put some more highlights up on YouTube and archive the entire stream if you're somehow interested in that. Friday night we'll do the DJ techno stream, and that should be a lot of fun. Um, it's been a crazy past couple weeks, so I've just got to get some of that out of out of my system um hope everyone has a great rest of your night we'll see you next week <laughs>